I'm here at VITU in Geneva, and I'm very pleased to be joined by Sasha Polverini, who's chairman of the Digital Financial Services Focus Group. Sasha, welcome and thank you very much indeed for joining us here today. Thanks for having me. So today's the final meeting of the focus group. Um, could you please explain to our viewers how this focus group came to be and what are some of the main achievements and outcomes of, of the focus group? Absolutely. So the focus group started in 2014, and today is really the uh, last meeting of this initiative. We had seven meetings all together over the period of two years. And uh, this is an important uh, event today because we are really wrapping up and closing a very intense and, and constructive project, uh, which was uh, in a way started as an experiment. The uh, focus group on digital financial services for financial inclusion was created and developed to uh, achieve three main objectives. On the one hand, we wanted to uh, really make sure that telecommunication authorities and regulators who play a significant role in promoting digital finance were aware of their uh, capabilities or responsibilities in this debate. We normally tend to interact with financial services regulators, Ministry of Finance, central banks, but as we speak of digital financial services, the digital component is playing uh, an important role. Hence the attention, uh, increasing attention to the telecommunication authorities. And it's a question of really understanding what roles and responsibilities they play compared to their opposite number at the central bank. So we're certainly not saying that there should be a recalibration of roles and responsibilities, but there's a need for a dialogue between two different categories of regulators that in general don't tend to speak a lot one with the other. So the objectives of this initiative was to create a forum, a platform where telecommunication authorities can meet with financial services authorities and they also can uh, interact with the private sector. So raising awareness was uh, a second objective, so really understanding uh, what kind of level of, of, of information is there. I mean, do telecommunication authorities are know about financial exclusion? Do they know that in some of their countries, uh, a high level of the population, a high percentage of the population is excluded from former financial services and we can reach up to 70-80% of the population not having access to a transaction account. So that has been an important uh, objective to achieve. And the third one, given that we have so many stakeholders uh, in the same room from the private sector and the public sector, was really taking the opportunity to identify a number of key issues that are currently preventing a digital financial services ecosystem from developing and analyze those issues, uh, share experiences and best practices from both the public sector and the private sector, understanding what challenges are both categories of stakeholders facing, and see whether we can come up with some solution. And so the opportunity of being in the same room on a regular basis, and of course we had seven in-person meetings, but there were a lot of conferences, calls, and uh, e-meetings that allow the work to progress in between face-to-face -face meetings. All that interaction allowed um, a lot of information to be exchanged uh, and best practices to be shared, and that led to uh, sets of reports and recommendations. So the outcomes of the focus group uh, are pretty encouraging, and I think this is a very successful initiative if we compare to the objectives that we initially uh, set. So the information, the awareness, the dialogue, and the uh, opportunity to address some of these issues in a concrete way. So we have uh, um, almost 27 reports that have been produced over the period of two years. So very intense uh, work from uh, all participants of the working groups and the, and the focus group in general on different themes and subjects. So from B2B to uh, government to, pay to people payment, uh, to networks and, and financial inclusion. So we really try to look at different angles of the same topic and create a landscape and really provide evidence of what is really happening in the market. We also did some interesting mystery shopping activities in uh, a couple of uh, African countries just to understand how customers really perceive uh, digital financial services and what is their experience and whether there's anything that can be improved so that their uh, experience is much more improved, easy, and they are much more interested in using these products and services. So the results in terms of deliverable of the focus group is these 27 reports that create the foundation for policy recommendation that really are uh, aimed at policymakers and regulators around the world. 
And the reason why we uh, worked on this policy recommendation, particularly in 2016, uh, is to fast track policy reform in a number of these emerging markets. So we know that sooner or later markets uh, face the same issues. Uh, data protection, for example, or consumer protection, or how can consumers have a recourse and what kind of instruments are available, or the reflection about deposit insurance. Is the mobile wallet and mobile money considered a sort of deposit and so should be subject to the same regulations? So we had all these discussions. And certainly from the experience that all the participants have, from their respective jurisdictions and markets and their own countries. We really extracted all the key messages and tried to see what can we provide to the regulators and policymakers to help them making a better job and, and, and really fast track policy reform. Because we realized that uh, sooner or later they will face the same issues and rather than reinventing the wheel, can we offer them something off the shelf that can be then adapted and, and uh, redefined, adjusted to the local reality to take into account the specific situation they face, but also allow them to accelerate the process and rather than doing mystery shopping themselves, we've done that for them. Rather than doing consultation, we've done that for them. Rather than calling experts, we've done that for them. So this is, a, this is a way to help them and really give them tools to do better their job. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, going through some of your reports, we've seen <coughs> that there's still roughly two billion people who remain unbanked. Um, wh what are some of the, the, the lessons learned and, and s some of the obstacles that, that are still remain um, in the face of y you know the, the widespread adoption of uh, digital financial services uh, across the globe? So there are very various ob obstacles and, and issues, of course. And uh, although I think uh, the work that the focus group has done will be really instrumental to make progress and, and move the needle, uh, it's still uh, a drop in the sea. I mean, there's, there's a lot that needs to be done. And we need to also bear in mind that every jurisdiction is different. Every market has its own situations, conditions, and characteristics, cultural, legal, uh, in, from in terms of industry, how the industry is organized, the incentives, the, the, uh, the appeal of the, of the, of the market for, for new investments. So uh, there are many obstacles in terms of mas market access. Uh, so allowing particularly non-financial institutions to be able to provide digital financial services and mobile money services to, uh, to the unbanked or the population in general. We have issues about the uh, organization and the management of the agent network, uh, which is uh, a key pillar for the success of digital financial services, particularly for the poor because they need to be able to access agent services in a, in a real proximity. So they need the, the whole issue is to replace the uh, old banking system that is based on brick and mortar branches with uh, a, a network of hundreds of thousands of agents in the, in the within the territory of a country so that they can offer cash in and cash out services. So having that network in place is essential for the success of any digital financial services strategy, particularly pursuing financial inclusion objectives. So these are also still on the table as issues. Uh, and the more and more the market becomes sophisticated, the more and more people rely on digital financial services and mobile money services, then you have issues emerging in terms of consumer protection, protection of funds uh, in terms of data protections and, and security of the system. So um, we have a situation where a number of countries have addressed some of these issues successfully, but we can't say there's a fully perfect market. Uh, there's no market that is, that is really working well on all these issues. So there are always some gaps and some flaws. So we try to provide solutions to fill those gaps and, and address those flaws. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's been a lot of important work in the group, but we're coming to the end of a, a study period, if you will. Um, wh what would you say are some of the next steps for the group, and how can we turn these, you know, reports and recommendations uh, into action, if you will? Right. So this is this is a, an important question because certainly, uh, particularly from my perspective as, as a chair, I'd like to see all this work uh, put at fruition, and so really, uh, I'd like to see this being helpful 
for both the industry but also the public sector regulators. So we don't want these uh, guidelines and principles and recommendations to stay on the shelf and get dusted. I mean, and they need to be used and, and they need to be implemented. And of course, uh, implementation doesn't mean that they always bring good results. So there's test and learning and measurement that needs to be uh, take, take that needs to take place there. So in terms of the next step, uh, I think that we have a pretty good overview now of what the issues are uh, in various markets and also in an abstract way in general. We know where the bottlenecks are, what are the challenges for consumer, for the industry to make it, you know, digital financial service scalable and profitable. I think we need to move to the implementation phase. We need to m try and see how this solution can really make a difference and allow government achieving their own objectives in terms of financial inclusion. So what will come next is probably an initiative that we'll see, uh, again, a number of these parties getting together uh, and work on specific countries to implement policy recommendations that were developed by this group. But we will also take advantage of work done by the World Bank and the CPMI through the Payment Aspect for Financial Inclusion Task Force, the PAFI uh, report, which also includes a number of principles and guidelines. So we want to take all this work done, uh, and which is consistently done. So we are not uh, going in different direction. We are, s we seems to be fairly aligned in terms of approach and where we're going. And really uh, look at the implementation phase. So we need to move away from the diagnostic uh, kind of situation and we, we, we don't need to understand what problems are again. We need to find real solutions. So the initiative that will follow up um, to the focus group uh, will still involve the ITU but a, a set of other organization and it will be a multi-partisan effort over a period of three years with a, uh, a with a work stream looking at implementation of these guidelines and recommendation. Uh, so with projects to uh, increase quality of service for the signal or uh, making sure that the payment infrastructure is uh, really performing as we, we need for low cost, uh, for low value transactions so in a cost effective way. But at the same time, what we realize has been extremely helpful and very valuable within this focus group is the exchange of information, is the knowledge sharing between parties that they don't tend to get together very often. And so it's not just the central banks and the telecommunication authorities, but it's the car business, the financial industry business, is the MNOs, is the aggregators, is the platform providers. So the richness of this initiative, which is really unique, and we haven't seen this anywhere else, and the technicality of the debate that we've managed to, to achieve is something that we want to continue going forward. So as one work stream will look at the implementation, another work stream will continue this debate on some of the issues for which we haven't found proper solutions and uh, we'll continue the analysis and over a period of three years the two work streams should converge and just summarize what have been learned from the experience on the ground and from the analysis and research on the other side. Okay, Sacha, well, that very interesting, and uh, I wish you the best of luck with, with the next phase of, uh, of the work, and uh, also a successful meeting and a workshop in the next couple of days. So thank you for your time. Thank you very much.